Hey audience, how many times has this happened to you? Seem familiar? 9 out of 10 underqualified internet forum trolls agree that if you've ever used Hoppy Paints, you'll be familiar with the intense agonizing strain that mixing paints puts on your body. But worry no further, using nothing but cheap parts in a 3D printer, we can solve this problem forever. Keep watching. Let's be honest, shaking paints really isn't that big of a deal. But when you have 10 or 20 bottles for every single project, it can get a bit tedious. Especially if you've got really old paints, like this one, that require a bucket load of mixing. This is really an example of what I might call a pass the salt problem. Just because it's a ridiculous problem doesn't mean it's not fun to solve anyway. So, if you want to do this project yourself, you can. There is a complete pass list down in the description, but here it is anyway. You're going to need a 70 RPM 12 volt motor, a toggle switch, a 2.1 millimeter DC socket, four 50 millimeter pieces of wire, and the 3D printed parts which include a stand, a clamp for the stand, a barrel, two barrel tighteners, two arms, a clamp to interface with the motor itself, a clamp pin to hold the clamp onto the stand, and a clamp to interface with the stand itself. Three M4 by 20 millimeter screws, five M4 nuts, one M3 by 10 millimeter screw, and finally four size 16 rubber bands. Obviously, you're also going to need a 12 volt power supply. Just go and steal one from your mum's bedside table. She's probably switched to 110 or 240 volts by now, or even diesel knowing her. You'll also need some light grease, but in a pinch you could make do with Vaseline. Again, see your mum's bedside table. Right up. It's going to be time now to put all this stuff together.
How cool is that? I'm actually super proud of this. It started off as something inside my head. It started off as a resin mixer, and then the prototype of that turned into a paint mixer designed to stir old paint bottles that I would only throw out. And now here it is on my table. And there are two cool bits of innovation here. The bit that actually does the mixing, and the bit that holds the bottle in there. Let's start with the bit that holds the bottle. By turning one of the top sections, we can loosen or tighten the grip. With this mechanism, iris enclosed, causing the rubber bands inside to constrict or release the contents. And the mixing component. Notice how it uses a really unusual movement. Instead of shaking violently like most paint mixers, this one uses a smooth kinematic motion in order to gently rotate, translate and invert the mix. This is the kind of mixing that most pharmaceutical companies use to get the most consistent mix and it's considered to be the gold standard for mixing. The inspiration for the mixing component came from me googling various mixing mechanisms. The kinematic mechanism itself is actually pretty common. The idea for the constricting mechanism though came a bit differently. It came from me messing around with a system to hold things inside this and after trying with various cams and screws I moved to a modified oil filter spanner which then evolved into this. So how does this work? You put something in you want to mix and you turn it on. That's not rocket surgery. Duh. Let's try it out actually mixing something. And I have a container here that I'm going to fill with glitter. God help me because I swore I'd never bring glitter into this new workshop, but I couldn't find any colored sand. All right, here we go. Glitter. Everywhere already. Oh, look at that. There's green and red. There's some red all the way to this end, and there's some green all the way to this end. Yeah, look at that. That's actually pretty consistently mixed now. I've tamped it down. Well, except for the f***ing craft herpes all over my workshop, that was actually pretty cool. This did an awesome job of mixing the two types of glitter together, and it was easy to watch and see what's happened. Let's check it out again, except this time in slow motion. Now we know how this thing works, how about paint? I've got a bottle of paint here that is very old and it's desperately in need of mixing. Yeah, the paint's completely separated here, so let's chuck this in the mix and see how it goes. That's 90 seconds, let's have a look at it. That's looking pretty mixed. So the real test here is that's pretty damn good. That is consistently mixed. I can see a couple of big clots in there and I reckon if I chuck the ball bearing in there that would get rid of these in no time. Let's call that a massive success. Okay so this is a pretty fun tool but let's be honest it's only going to come in handy if you spend a lot of time mixing paints or if your lava lamp is broken. And that said, just like a lava lamp, it's pretty cool. My favorite part of any project is asking, what could I have done better? And honestly, there's only one thing missing from this and I can fix it pretty easily. Just one project, just give me one project where I don't get super glue everywhere and with glitter no less. Oh, son of a... Ah, 
that's better. Now he looks like a happy little robot bartender who just wants you to notice how content he is with his life. In all seriousness, this was the prototype for a bigger version, which means I can take all of the learnings that I've made from this, and there were quite a few, and apply them to a scaled up version. But that doesn't mean that this version here, this smaller version, is not useful. It actually is really useful. Cases in point. If you want to make one for yourself, I'm making two options available. I'll be putting a link to a print your own version with all the files in the description. And if you don't want to buy parts and print your own, I'll be making a kit available via another link. And that brings us to the end of this video. I am super happy with this project, so is he. And I know that this is going to save me a lot of time down the track. Maybe. I really had a lot of fun solving the challenges involved in making this. Challenges like that really motivate and excite me, and honestly, I enjoy the process of making this stuff more than the enjoyment I get out of using it. If you want to share what motivates you, please feel free to leave a comment and start a discussion in the comments section below. That's the end of the video. If you like this video, or you like this tool, or you like me, do me a favor and leave a like and a comment. If you have any other ridiculous problems that you'd like to see me try and solve with a machine like this, comment down below. Now I'm going to go and make this thing even bigger. See you in the next video.